Hello and welcome to this video on best practices for backing up Enterprise Vault. My name is Phil Walters. I'm a consultant working for a company called Adeptech. So we're going to start out by thinking about what we need to back up. And the big issue with Enterprise Vault data is it's interlinked. So we have our databases in SQL. We have the archived items within Vault Store partitions. And also we've got references within Vault Store group databases. And we also have our index volumes. And all this data is interlinked. So it's very important we all back it up all together. So in terms of thinking about the main components to back up, First of all, we have our SQL databases, and the key databases are the directory database that contains all the configuration of Enterprise Vault, the Vault Store databases that contain references or metadata for the archived items, the Vault Store group or fingerprint databases that contain the hashes of every item we've archived, plus other databases like reporting, auditing, and monitoring databases. We also need to back up our vault store partitions, which are really just files and folders that contain the archived items. And we also need to back up our indexes. Once again, these are folders and files that contain the, the full text indexes. Also important, remember to back up other key files and settings, the system state, the registry, license files, and so on. The key thing though is consistency. So we need to back up all these things together and we need to back it up when things aren't changing. And we do that by using something called backup mode. Backup mode is like a read only mode. It's required to get that consistent backup of our indexes and storage. It can be set by the admin console, but we usually use PowerShell scripts. And you can generate those PowerShell commands using a PowerShell script called transformbackup.ps1. And we'll look at how to do that within the demo. You should create PowerShell scripts to run both pre and post backup. Pre backup, obviously, to put all the index locations and the vault stores into backup mode. And when you finish doing the backup successfully, take them out again. It's important to check every morning the Enterprise Vault has switched out of backup mode. So let's look in more detail at what we need to back up. So the SQL databases. It's very important to work closely with your SQL DBA. The best practice is to back up the fingerprint databases before everything else. Use either a flat file backup or commercial backup software. Ideally, do a full backup every day. If you can't do that, then do a weekly full backup and daily incremental backups. Important thing is that the backup of the SQL database is done at the same time as when you're backing up your vault stores and your index locations. Next, the vault store partitions. You need to back up both open and closed partitions. If you have any ready partitions, these will be empty. They're waiting for what we call partition rollover. Best to do full backups every day. If you can't do that, full backups weekly and a daily incremental backup. Now, closed partitions usually don't change, so these can be backed up less frequently, for, for example, monthly. And as I said, it's very important to back up vault store partitions at the same time as the corresponding vault store and fingerprint databases. The reason for backing up indexes is to reduce the time taken to rebuild or synchronize indexes and for a whole system recovery. So for the very large archives, like your journal archives, you know, file system archives, it's recommended to definitely back up the indexes every day. For mailbox archive indexes, you could back them up every week. If you decide to close index locations, these can be backed up less frequently for example, monthly, because they aren't updated with new data. So here are an example of scheduled timings. This is just an example. You need to tailor it to your environment. But in this example, the exchange core hours are from 8 in the morning to 6 in the evening. Then you do your exchange backup, which is running for 4 hours from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Then we have the EV archiving window, from 10 o'clock in the evening to 1 o'clock in the morning. Then it's very important to have a period where the message queues can clear down. And then the Enterprise Vault backup would start at 2 o'clock in the morning, and in this case run to 8 o'clock in the morning. 
Now that backup window for Enterprise Vault will just get larger and larger and larger if we don't do anything about it. So what we're going to look at now is ways that we can reduce or keep that backup window under control. And there are basically three things that we can do. The first thing is to collect our EV storage files into CAB files. This is easy to apply to old data, but it needs to be carefully planned for multiple open partitions so that we've got a time when we can run this process to create the CAB files every day. It can have an impact on retrieval times and it's not easily undone, so we need to think carefully about whether we want to do this or not. One thing that we definitely can do is to automatically roll over our vault store partitions regularly. This is a really good practice. The rollover can be based on time, size or a combination of both. Generally, closed partitions don't need to be backed up as frequently, particularly if you're not allowing users to delete archived items and you're not running expiry. Also, close index locations and create new locations and then you don't need to back up the closed index locations as often. So closure is a good strategy for reducing the length of your EV backups. The important thing to remember is that when you roll over a partition, make sure you update your backup schedule so you're now backing it up. Finally, the backup type. You could perform weekly full backups and use daily incremental backups. Also, as we've already said, backing up old data less often, so your closed partitions, your closed index locations. Use technologies like snapshot backups, which are much quicker. And it's very important to carefully plan any changes to your backup type and your backup schedule. So now I'm going to move on to a different topic, which is understanding how safety copies work and how they interact with backup. So here we have an example. The first example at the top is Enterprise Vault 10. And we have a mail item that's going to be archived. So when the item is archived, a pending item is created within Exchange. Obviously, the item is also archived within the Vault Store partition. This pending item is usually referred to as a safety copy. And we don't want to turn into a shortcut or strip out all the content until we've backed up Enterprise Vault. So when the backup is complete, the item can be turned into a shortcut. If we think now of the example in Enterprise Vault 11, we have our mail item. Now we have a physical storage queue. So yes, the item is turned into a pending item. The item is committed to the storage queue and then it's archived to the vault store partition. So we can keep our safety copy on the storage queue. I still having two copies of the item but we don't need to keep it in exchange. So once the item is committed to the vault store partition, we can immediately turn the item into a shortcut. When the vault store partition is backed up later, we can then delete the item from the storage queue because obviously these items would just continue building up and using up disk space. So if we look at the options which is on the top of the page here, that's the new option we have in Enterprise Vault 11, which is yes in the storage queue. The yes in the original location is how it was in Enterprise Vault 10. If we use that yes in the original location, then these four steps are what will happen. Backup mode is cleared on the Vault Store by a post backup script, as we've already mentioned. This triggers a process called Storage Firewatch, which will scan the partitions for backed up files. Storage Firewatch will then place entries on the A1 message queue for items to be post-processed. Then an archiving task will read the A1 queue and it will then delete the original items and replace them with a shortcut. So that's what we call post-processing. But how does Enterprise Vault know items have been backed up? Well, there are two ways of doing this. Traditionally, we use the archive attribute. So the backup product will change the archive attribute and then Enterprise Vault will pick that up. But for snapshot type backups, the archive attribute doesn't change. So we need to use a different method, which is what we call here check for a trigger file. 
We need to create a trigger file in the root of the vault store partition. There are two options. We can create an XML file called partition secured notification.xml. Or we can just create a text file, a blank text file called ignore archive bit trigger.txt. If the trigger file is present when the vault store comes out of backup mode, it'll rename that trigger file to .old and marks all the files as backed up. How does Enterprise Vault keep track of backed up items? Well, there are two tables within the vault store database. The first one is the watched file table. Now, entries are only created in this table if you're using safety copies. And the table is cleared once the items have been backed up. So if we have entries within the watch file table, it means that items are waiting to be backed up. We also have the journal archive table. Now the journal archive table is used whether we're using safety copies or not. Once the index committed and backup complete fields are set to one, entries are kept for a length of the transaction history, which is 32 days by default. So we can look in this table to check whether items have been backed up by querying the backup complete column. The easiest way though of monitoring backup is to use what we call the Vault Store Usage Reporter. You can see the URL usage.asp. And this will tell us the number of items that are waiting backups. And it basically querying the Vault Store database and those um, tables that we've just looked at but it's an easy way of doing it. There are other ways of monitoring backup though. So we're looking here at the Vault Store Partition Properties and on the Backup tab, you'll notice that there's this Details button. If you click that Details button, you'll get much more details about what's happened in the previous backup. So you can this, see in this case that we have got two secured items that have been back up, backed up during the last scan and you can see the number of unsecured items. So that brings us to the end of this video, but it'd be really useful to check out the separate demonstration videos. There are two videos. First of all, creating a PowerShell script to backup Enterprise Vault. And secondly, Enterprise Vault post-processing and monitoring backups. Thanks for listening.